as I possibly can this morning. We do have another engagement later on this evening. And we want to allow ample time for us to do what we need to do and be prepared to go. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. We're going to commence our reading at verse 1 through verses 11. Genesis chapter 37. 1 through 11. As we stand in reference and reverence to the Word of God. Are you there? Yeah. The Word of the Lord says, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph. Somebody shout Joseph. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the boy was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah. His father's wives and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of the other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream. He told it to his brothers and he, they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep rose, and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaves. His brother said to him, Shall indeed you reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream, told it to his brothers and said, Look, I am the sun. I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. So he told it to his father and the brothers, and his father rebuked him said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down in the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. I simply want to speak from the subject or the topic for the next few weeks. I am Joseph. I am Joseph. Just point at yourself and say, I am Joseph. Today, I want to talk about dreams. Dreams. I'm going to try my best to be brief on this morning, but I'm going to need your help. Dream is an Old Testament way of divine communication. A dream in the Old Testament always carried divine significance. And I come on this morning to speak to the dreamers in the house. Not dreaming as in 
what happens when you're in your rested eye movement or rapid eye movement rather uh, during uh, the peaceful nights of your sleep. I'm talking about the dreams that are deeply embedded in your spirit that only God himself can place there. Yes, yes. I'm going to jump right in because I want you to understand that when you begin to look up the name Joseph, it literally means the remover or the increaser. Mm. Joseph's name literally means to remove hindrances. It means to unlock. It means to unblock. It means to allow flow so that you can receive increase. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, that there are some hypothetical symbolic Josephs in the spiritual realm this morning. I want you to understand something, my brothers and sisters, when I titled this particular message, I Am Joseph, it is aimed at those of us that have something stirring up on the inside. And that something is the dream that the Lord has placed within you. And so I want you at this time to just tap yourself on the shoulder and remind yourself, encourage yourself, I am Joseph. Mm. Joseph, my brothers and sisters, was hated. He was despised because of his dreams. Mm. He was despised because of his dream. He was hated because of what was on the inside of him. Might I suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that you can recognize the Josephs that are in the house because God has given you dreams and visions. He placed these dreams on the inside of you a long time ago. But it seems as though your life has taken an unexpected turn. Distractions came your way and you almost forgot your dreams. Am I in the right house this morning? But how many of you can say that in the last few years, I'm preaching prophetically this morning, so I promise you I won't be long. But how many of you can say that in the last two years, God has begun to stir up the dreams on the inside of you? Those dreams and those visions won't let you sleep at night. Those dreams and those visions give you no peace and no rest. You can't concentrate at work because what's on the inside of you is starting to take over you. Starting to take over your mind. And and, and how many of you can say that the dream on the inside wants now to become a reality on the outside? You walked in here today and you know you're on the verge of a breakthrough because if you don't take a drastic leap of faith, you'll probably, instead of having a breakthrough, you'll have a breakdown. Listen, I'm preaching to myself this morning so y'all don't have to excuse me. For some of you, that drastic step is on your job. For some of you, that drastic step is in your family. For some of you, that drastic step is in your finances. For some of you, that drastic step is in some relationship. Still, for others, it's in ministry. But God won't give you peace and he won't let you sleep until you say, yes, Lord. Do I have anybody in here that feels God pushing you, feel God tugging on you? It started off as a small voice, but in the last few months it's gotten louder and louder and louder and now you know that if you don't step into the will of God, he'll kill you. I don't know if you've ever been to the point that I'm at right now, but how many of you 
know that when God wants your attention, He'll do what He has to do to make sure that He gets your attention. Somebody shall dream. You know your, your dream is a calling because it doesn't only affect you, but it affects the people that you're connected to. Who am I talking to in here? You, you know it's a calling on your life because if you don't step out and do what God is calling you to do, then the people that are connected to you will not receive the things that God has for them in the manner that God has prepared for them. If you don't step out on faith, then other people will be hindered. If, if you don't step out on faith, then the people that are following you will be hindered. If, if you don't step out and do what God is telling you to do, then your family members won't get to the level that they need to get to. How many of you are, are you know that there is a calling on the inside of you and you've got to step out and do what God is telling you to do? My brothers and sisters, listen, I believe that 2012 is the year of drastic movement. It's the year to take drastic leaps of faith. Thank you, Pastor Cain of CBA, when he told me on last week, an extraordinary reward requires an extraordinary risk. An extraordinary reward requires an extraordinary risk. In other words, if you know that God has a major blessing from you, you can expect that it's going to require you to take some major leaps of faith. Here's the thing about taking leaps of faith. When you step out of the boat, you still have both people that are in the boat telling you that you shouldn't have done that and you shouldn't have gone God is preparing 
you for a purpose. God is preparing you for a purpose. You, you begin to see things that don't make sense. Who am I talking to in here? You, God begins to show you the end from the beginning. It's how it's going to be when you get there. But he never shows you how it's going to all come together. It's your responsibility to trust him to put things together. I said this on this week that God's responsibility is to do the impossible. So when something seems impossible, that that's a hint to you that you can no longer handle it. But you have to now put it in the hands of the Lord. God is preparing you. He's preparing you for a purpose. And because he's preparing you for a purpose, there are some things that you used to get away with that you will no longer get away with anymore. Because watch this, when God prepares you, he doesn't just prepare some of you, he prepares all of you. Do I have a witness in here? When God prepares you, he prepares your head, he prepares your body, he prepares your legs, your arms, he prepares all of you. He prepares your children, he prepares your, your wife, your husband, come on in here somebody, because uh, he, he prepares everything that's connected to you. When God is preparing you, watch this, he breaks you. When God is preparing you, he breaks you. God gave me this revelation because uh, the last few weeks I've been on a graham cracker um, binge. I've been eating graham crackers out of my mind. I don't know what's going on in me. I fell in love with graham crackers. <laughs> That's the sweetest thing I can have. I ain't <laughs> And, and whenever you look at a graham cracker, the graham crackers are actually perforated and, and they're made to be broken. Oh. And, and God began to give me this revelation because watch this, y'all. I, I, I tried I tried to be neat. I'm, I'm, I'm a neat freak. And I tried to, to always be neat. And, and, and when I break the graham crackers, Minister Trina, I, I don't want crumbs to fall off. <laughs> But, but I found, Mark, that, that the more I try to, to, to be clean in my break, crumbs still fall off. The other day, I got so frustrated with myself, I said, why for the life of me, I can't break this graham cracker without dropping crumbs? And God quickly gave me a revelation. He says, because when you're breaking things, some stuff will fall off. When God is breaking you, some stuff will fall off. When God is breaking you, some people, help me somebody, will fall off. God, God when he's breaking you, some stuff is going to fall off of you because God can't use you with some
was a dreamer. And watch this. Joseph was hated. Joseph was hated because of his dreams. Joseph was hated because of what was on the inside of him. Watch this. You have to understand that Joseph had favor with his father. Joseph worked for his brothers, but Joseph, when he would see that his brothers were doing something evil, the Bible says that he would go back and tell his father. So, at first, I wanted to call Joseph a tattletale. Yeah. Because they knew not to do anything wrong in his presence. But watch this, my brothers and sisters. When you begin to stand for righteousness, you can get ready for attacks to come from your enemies. Do I have a witness in here? And the reason why some of you are beginning to lose friends right now is because you've taken a stand for righteousness. And it's not, oh, help me in here, somebody. You know, people look at you and say, mm, you changed. Now you think you all that. But it's not that, baby. Yes, I have changed, but some things have fallen off of me. And you see, they think you are still the old you. <laughs> they think you are still who you used to be. But what they don't understand is that God has a hook on you. And if you even try to go back to what you used to be, God will take you out. When you begin to stand for righteousness, you can expect your enemies to act up. Do I have a witness in here? Watch this. Joseph teaches us a very, very valuable lesson. And as we go through the next month, we're going to learn more about Joseph. But in this introductory, I just want to, 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 to drop some principles here that I believe are crucial in the life of Joseph and will be crucial in our lives. And one of the things here that I see is that you have to be careful who you share your dreams with. Because watch this, there are some dream killers and dream assassins that, that come to assassinate your dreams. They speak negatively. They say you can't do it. And watch this, and I know some of y'all, when I'm going to say this, it's going to break your heart, but I've got to tell it the way God gave it to me. Most dream killers are either family members or close friends. Because you can always expect, oh help me Jesus, you're going to have to help me here. You can always expect that when God begins to raise you up, it's not the strangers that's going to start hating on you. It's the people that are closest to you that are going to start hating on you. I'm not telling you something that I read in the book. I'm telling you something that I know for myself. I've lost some friends, not because I was ugly with them, not because I not because I treated them badly, but simply because I made up in my mind that I'm gonna do God's will. And, and watch this. I'm not talking about friends from when I was in the world. I'm talking about friends since I'm in the world, since I'm in church. I'm talking about Christian friends. Not a 
problem with you, I have a problem with myself. Yeah. Because if when I walk in the building, if demons don't tremble, then something's wrong. <laughs> I, walked in, I walked into one of my friend's house not too long ago, and he had a beer. He threw it across the room. Watch this, another person. Another person's success is like poison to a jealous person. Another person's success is like a cancer to a jealous person. When you get blessed, they get sick. Just enough. Uh -huh. 
thing that God is about to do in you, and I'm talking to the believers, I'm talking to the Josephs, the thing that God is about to do in you is going to be payback for everything that you went through. <coughs> But watch this. It, 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 there's, there's a small window here. You have to be, you have to be accurate in when you move. God has it set up strategically. Your next move will be a compensatory move. It will compensate you for everything that you've gone through in your past. Watch this. Your move of faith moves the hand of God. Some of you have reached the limit of what God can do for you on this level. You've reached, you've accomplished everything that God has for you to accomplish on this level. And what has happened is we have gotten we have gotten comfortable on this level and we think that that's all there is to God. The only limits in your life, oh I'm just full of it this morning. The only limit of your life is the limit you put on God. about elevation without talking about giving because they are directly connected when I talk about giving I'm not necessarily talking about money I'm talking about planting planting what have you sown into somebody else information has God given to you that you have passed on to another generation? God is requiring a leap of faith. When you get to that level, Expect a breaking process. There's no way that he can break you without something falling off. Crumbs are not only pieces of what used to be whole, but it's also evidence of what once was. What falls off is your testimony. What falls off in this season is what you can go back to and let people know if he can take this off of me, then he can take it off of you. Your comes are your testimony to let people know that you once were there. And for some of you, he's giving you a great testimony. Some of you have been healed. Some of you have been delivered from drugs and alcohol. Some of you have been healed from cancer and, and so many other things. <laughs> I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for the Josephs in the house. 